Advantages of railroads. We already said weather. Any other reasons? Advantages of railroads? Faster. Faster? Faster. Yeah. Okay. More people. You can carry more people. Year round. Yeah. And also, uh, one thing they said is that you can, it, you can go in a straight line, right? Was if you're following the water, you sometimes, like the river, you have to go the way the river goes, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, Mark's explanation, so what was your explanation for why the railroad is... Uh, well, so I have a couple. So one, one thing that just to, just to underline, because it's easy to miss it, but one of the differences between canals and railroads that the, is mentioned in the thing, but canals were mostly government projects, like states paid for the canals because they wanted, like New York State wanted this Erie Canal to bring, but railroads were more, they weren't done by states, they were more private invested in private companies, um, and so that sometimes is a little bit, might be a difference. Um, I think also part, because there are all of these advantages of the railroad, they want to keep the price low because they want to dazzle everybody and make everybody use their services, right? So if railroads were, you know, this was the old price, this was the new price, so railroads could be, four, they could have charged 14 cents an hour, or 14 cents a ton, right? Just to be a little bit cheaper than the road, but then more people would have done canals. So they have to keep the price close to the canal price, but they were better, their advantages. So they're also trying to get as much money as they can. So it would, that, again, this is my hypothesis, but I would guess that they would want to have maximized how much money they could get while still keeping people from saying, oh, that's too expensive, I'm just going to ride on that. I'm just going to use the canal for my business. Because there are all of those advantages. And so they, they want you to pay for it. You know? It's like the difference between taking a cab or taking a, a limo. It's better, you should pay a little bit more from their perspective. Uh, so, uh, this is starting to be more and more about business, right? Movement is starting to be more and more about business. So now we're going to do a little kind of scenario thing where we talk about how different people are affected by this. So I want you to get two other people that you're going to work with in a group. I need four groups. One group will be, so groups of three, one group will be four. So you guys are A over here. So if you are A, all you have to read is the A part, okay? And you have to be willing, you have to be ready to tell the class uh, in plain language about your situation. We wanted to start by talking about supply and demand in a very concrete way, in a way that uh, people could personalize it. One of the techniques that works really well in the adult ed classroom is kind of historical point of view taking. So it's much more abstract when you're reading about people in the past that, than when you take on the role you pretend to be somebody who's in the past. And so uh, that's what we did today is we gave them a kind of scenario of who they were, some basic facts, but we asked them to make up a name for themselves, to think of the details that they could tell about their family. So to make it much more real for them, uh, what their economic interests were, because this was going to become a kind of economic discussion about benefits and incentives and demand. All right, so finish up that last sentence, but we need you to stop writing and stop talking to your group because we need you to put your ear into the air. We need you to listen, listen to each other, right? Because each of you represented a different part of all of this stuff. So think about, as you're hearing other people, think about how their issues or their concerns might be affected by yours, how they might be similar, how they might be different things like that. So listen carefully to what other people are saying, and then we're just going to go in order. So can we have uh, group A, scenario A, our shoemakers? Can you, can you stand can you up and tell us, us about yourselves? Tell us about your name. Yeah, yeah stand up. Everyone's going to do it. I'll stand with you. Come. Tell us, <laughs> tell us your name and, and your, what's, what's going on in your life. What are your struggles? What are your... So now, you guys, I really want you to listen because we're all businessmen now. So they might have a problem that it might be to your advantage to help them solve it. So go ahead. Um, we are Thomas family. Then we family of four. We got two kids, twins. Okay. We are shoemaker. 
Okay, so they're shoemakers. <laughs> okay, we have the Tanson family, you say, yes. We had twins, Ron and Rene, <laughs> who are <laughs> who are very always very hungry and thirsty. Ah. So um, we could afford my husband here, Angel, is a shoemaker. And even though we live in New York City, we can afford a good, decent milk. So as a mother, I decide to prepare a sweet milk that is mixed with beer mm. and <laughs> some kind of grains. Um, uh, and be grateful that my kids didn't get any disease like tuberculosis. Okay, so I'm just gonna explain a little bit. So the swill milk is after the, uh, the cows in the brewery are fed the mash that's used to make beer, right? So their milk is not very good, right? And it could cause disease, which is why you said you're grateful yeah. that your My kids have not get disease. tuberculosis. Okay. <laughs> so remember them, keep them in your mind, the Thompson family, the shoemakers, and their, their problem, okay? What is your problem? That we can afford to get a, a fresh, uh, good milk. Right. Because remember, they live in New York City, and in New York City, there's no refrigeration. There's no so there's no store that you can go to get your milk, and there's it's crowded and it's dirty, and there's no room for cows. Right. So that's their situation. Uh, yes, so a rich merchant. A rich merchant wearing her rich merchant pants. Yeah, she lives right next door to them, and they have to watch every day her better life. Go ahead. My name is Victoria. I'm a rich merchant. I live in New York City. Me and my family can't live well because I inherited a really good shipping business from my father. I have a horse which takes me to my business, um, business meeting. Since I have a horse, I have a, uh, a stable. I have been thinking since I'm paying for a stable, I should get a cow so my family can have fresh milk. The fresh milk keeps my children very healthy. So you can go and uh, raid Victoria's house if you get really desperate for good milk. <laughs> right. So another piece of the puzzle, we have the Hendersons. Yeah, um, we're from Orange County. We have uh, a lot of cows we're raising, <coughs> which produce a lot of milk. Nice. <coughs> Sounds great. That's the problem is, is that everyone around us are farmers and all, we're all in competition to sell our milk. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to make other things with the milk to sell to help our family with food and clothes. Like which what? is cheese, like butter, this. cream, and yogurt. Mm -hmm. So I can go to you and my family. So, so I like that. So I like that you're. So we're starting. So is there? So now, so that was what you guys came up with, right? So I like that. So and we can help them. Yeah, tell us about that. We can help them because they don't have anything, you know. So we we can sell. They got spoiled milk, so right. So maybe we can sell a, a cow to them to help them eat. Sell them our cheese, butter, cream, and yogurt to help them survive. So what's the problem? So that sounds wonderful. See, T is such a compassionate heart. She sees a family who needs their milk. healthy food. <laughs> so she wants to give you guys milk. She wants to sell you guys milk and egg and, and I'm sorry, butter and yogurt and cream. Mm -hmm. What's the problem with that? What's well, the challenge? Right. How far? Because I don't know if you said it, but how far are you guys from them? Sixty miles upstate. Sixty miles upstate. 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 So there's and I'm so. A rich Right, so that's a you great. You can help travel. Yeah. So that's that's a beautiful. If we can make that connection, but, but that's going to be a really hard thing because it's sixty miles, and then why is sixty miles hard? Is the thing that you piece that you said. Travel. It's far, but then what makes traveling with milk hard? It's spoiled. It's spoiled. Right? You have no refrigeration. You have no way to keep it. Right, because it takes too long. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm seeing a lot of problems. I'm seeing, but I'm seeing some positive. I like to you're, I see some connections. Okay. Well, depending on the, the temperature of the water, you can 
somehow crate certain things and put it in the water to keep it keep it from um, spoiling. So I don't watch some beer commercials. And they have like two beers <laughs> and they're naked and they pull it up. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Okay. Well, let's see. Let's see if there are. Other, well, let's let's. We have one final kind of participant. So, you guys, what what's your name and tell us tell us your story and let's see if we can figure out and talk about how you fit in all of this. Lashana and Fabio Williams, their cousins. Uh huh. Um, Lashana and Fabio on a farm. They package the milk inside glass bottles. The bottles are packed with ice. Lashana and Fabio walk to the station. They meet with the train. The train arrives. The conductor asks, "What are you shipping today?" Lashana says, "Cases of milk for the market." Fabio asks, "How long is the ride to Manhattan Flea Market?" The conductor says, four hours." Lashana and Fabio board the train. Okay, well then, y'all, yeah, y'all go. Yeah, y'all can help us with the, the keeping of our milk and cheese and stuff mm -hmm. to get it to the family over there. How could they help you with the milk and the cheese and stuff together? Because they have refrigeration. Then is that what you just said? So first of all, you could just help them. Right? <laughs> you don't need anybody else. You got a cow in your stable, but why why does the rich merchant not helping the shoemaker family afford? Because I'm rich. Right? So there's <laughs> right? We're the, I got mine. You were you worry about yours. But also we remember my husband is a shoemaker and we don't have enough money. So we won't be able to afford it. Right. That, and that's why you don't. That's why you're drinking swim milk and she's drinking fresh milk, right? So we'll we have buy, we have we'll this. Buy, we'll buy your shoes. <laughs> so again, you can, we have this we love connection waiting to happen. Trade. But right. we but we need something to help it happen. So that was yeah, that, that was a really shoes. nice creative. I like the, the yeah, depiction of that. Yeah, I like how you guys did that. You gotta shine but who shoes. but who are you guys? Because it's on the farm. So they're the cousins on the farm, but so. The Dairy Promise Farm, and William showing up in New York. Right, so that's kind of, that's their, that's us. Their, yeah. you're maybe close to them, but so did you guys maybe, you split? You were D, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what's your job? So what's your actually? job at D? We are the... Shipping. The railroad agent that will provide the service of transportation. So talk a little bit. You've heard kind of every, you guys are going last, so you've heard everybody speak. Can you, what can you say to them? Maybe just talk to them, don't talk to us. Don't talk to me. What can you say to these people? You got the Thompsons, you got the Victoria, Victoria. what's your last name? Just Victoria. It's like Madonna's in the name. And you've got the, the Henderson, the Henderson farm. What can you say to them? We are the we are the rail uh area rail uh, roadway. We gotta we're ready to transport your uh, trans transport your goods and uh, provide a fast and quality service uh, and will make your, your business profitable. One, I don't think you have a good shipping business. <laughs> Two, you might need it because you have the hole over there. I just need a cow. <laughs> <laughs> and I can do my own thing. Okay. okay. So, so, can I, so, so now, so based on that, his plan, who is that helping? Who's not helping? Who is it helping? They can help us. How is it helping you? Transport our milk to other places. Remind me of what your problem was? We Where are we at? Everybody selling the same milk. Right, so you need to get beyond yeah. everybody. Okay, right. so that's going to help okay. you guys. Oh, so we can move, like I said in the beginning. <laughs> so it's going to help you guys because you're going to get in a, a way to think. You're going to get new markets. You're going to get new places where you can sell your stuff. Yep. Okay, good. Who else is it going to help? Me, I need a cow. So you're going to get a cow from them. You already have a cow. You already have a cow. Don't have a cow. No, I have a boy, then I have a cow. You could donate money to them. That's, but that's right. not going to happen. <laughs> so can it help they you guys? They your horse shoes. Can, I'm worried about my children. Can the railroad can agent the help you guys? You guys, the Thompson family. Are you waiting for no? In the forest. <laughs> you still can't. You think you still can't afford the milk? Okay. So you think you can't afford it, and, and we're speaking abstractly now, but one thing to keep in mind, they need to sell it, right? They have a problem. They can't sell it. So if you say, well, we can't afford that much, they might set a price right now. Let's just quickly set a price. How much are you selling your milk? No, so maybe we, we, wait, wait. we can give it to a lower price that they can afford. So how much yeah. do you give me a price? 
Or we can just trade. We'll give you some and you make us some shoes, though, money. Right. 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 So, so we can start, so you can start to figure that stuff out, right? You can trade with them because you are not just, you, you're, you're not in a certain, you're, you're creating something, right? So you can trade, but also they have a need, so they need to sell you stuff. So if you can't afford it, like, she said, well, 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 well maybe what we do, or, or Roxanne said, we'll lower her, our price, because they want you to buy their stuff. They need customers, because yes. where they live, their milk is just sitting there, but, right? Uh, what about the transportation? So you're going to use them? Yeah. They're going to use them. Yeah. They're going to use them. They're going to so now for people in the city who don't have cows, because not everybody can afford one, now you have access to cows outside the city. All right. So I'll just read to you what actually happened. Okay, so this is based on a real story. In 1843, an agent for the Erie Railway had the idea of transporting milk from upstate Orange County to New York City. The idea caught on immediately. As soon as people realized that it was possible to buy fresh milk from upstate, everybody wanted some. Lines a block long formed at the Erie Terminal to buy all the milk offered for sale. Soon, wholesome country milk was widely available for about two-thirds the cost of swill milk. Okay, so what made that possible? Wait, say it again. So soon, wholesome country milk was widely available for about two-thirds the cost of swill milk. The railroad. The railroad. The made transportation. It yeah. It was a really nice way for students to kind of get into that perspective, and, and what happened was was great. And you know, because they were all, each of them presented their situation and kind of explained to the group who they were and, and what the problems they were facing. And without us saying anything, the, the milk farmers were like, "Oh, well, we'll sell you. You want milk? We have milk." Well, you know, they already started to kind of be in that, and which is what happens when you put a student in the perspective of someone in history. They they make it real, it makes it real to them. So one thing that we, we wanted to do was in that activity had a couple of different layers. The first was to kind of get to the connection between the development of the railroad system and the expansion of markets. But we also, because we, you know, we were looking at it with this economic lens, it was an opportunity to look at a little bit the ideas of supply and demand. So we're gonna read a little bit together, but before we do, I just wanna talk about it. And we're gonna use, it's gonna be a pretend scenario, but we're gonna stick with the Anderson film. Henderson Farm. The Henderson Farm kind of is an example, and I'm going to put some numbers up just to talk, but they're, they're, they're pretend numbers. So, let's say, for example, that the Henderson Farm produced 100 bottles of milk, right? As a farm, they would produce much more than that, but let's just to keep it manageable. Let's say the Henderson, they produced 100 bottles of milk, right? They have this new connection with the railroad, they have new markets, new places they can go to sell. And let's say they sell it, the price per bottle, let's say it's five cents, okay? And they sell all 100 bottles. So they produce 100 bottles, they sell them for five cents, and they sell all 100 bottles because that's a really good price. How much money do they take in? What's their income? Not their profit, because we're not going to worry about profit today. Which is how much are they taking in? They're selling 100 bottles, 5 cents each. $5. Okay. So, that's one possibility, right? They can produce 100. Now let's say, because they're trying to find, to go back a step, they're trying to find that price. They want to get the most money that they can but they also want people to be able to buy it, right? They sold, if they sold their bottle for $20, nobody's gonna buy it and they're not gonna sell any. They're just gonna sit there and waste it all. So let's say they produce 80 bottles, fewer bottles, and they charge a little bit more, they charge 10 cents per bottle, okay? Now 10 cents is a little bit more expensive, right? How much money would that take in? Be $6. All right, so now I want to stop and let's talk about why some of this might be. So here, 100 people bought it, right, at this price. Five cents, 100 people bought it. At 10 cents, only 60 people bought it. Why is it lower? Why did fewer people buy it? The cost went up. I'm sorry? The cost went up. The cost went up. It's more expensive, right? People are not going to buy it. Less, fewer people are going to buy it if it's more expensive. 
So now let's do, you look at one last example. Let's say they only make 40 bottles. They only produce 40 bottles. They need to sell it for 50 cents. Why would they need to sell it for, why would it be more expensive if they produce fewer bottles? Why would they have to charge more? So why would you guys have to charge more? So if they charge 50 cents, they'll make more money. Yeah. Why would they make more money? Right, because it's a much more expensive thing, right? Except if you charge too much. If you charge too much, nobody's going to buy it, right? So let's say at this price, only four bottles sold. So how much money did they bring in? So that would be $2, right? So we're going to look at this, the kind of what, this is a, 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 a table looking at that relationship, right? The first concern, as soon as we had this market set up, they had a problem, they needed to get rid of their milk. They wanted milk, they didn't have any milk. They presented a solution. We will help take your milk from here to here. Sandra, because she's the head of the household, her first concern was, are we going to be able to afford it? Right? And that's their interest. Their interest is being able to afford milk based on what they can do. What's their interest? Selling their milk, but what else is your interest? Transportation. That's, that's, your, that's what you need, but what's your interest? What are you trying to do? You're a milk farmer. Oh, trying to make money. You're trying to make money, right? So those things are in opposite directions, right? They want to pay as little as possible. You want them to pay as much as possible, right? And so the idea of the laws of supply and demand are trying to get at where those things meet. Compromise. That comp how that compromise works, right? If you charge too much, now it's not like, Sandra, it's not like you guys are talking to each other saying, well, I'll pay this and I'll pay this, and then you, you figure it out that way. You don't go to the supermarket and start haggling with people, right? You don't bargain in the supermarket. No, they call the police. <laughs> <laughs> they call the police if you do, right? But the idea is if you charge too much, nobody's going to buy it, right? If you produce too much, you're not going to make enough money. So let's, so looking here, what's the best price? Five cents. Why is five cents the best price? You're making 100% profit, and the 10 cents, you only make a 75% profit. Does everybody agree? Uh, maybe the 10 cents. Why the 10 cents? Because you don't have to produce as much mm -hmm. and you still somewhat break even or get a profit. Even if you don't sell the whole thing. Right, so here, the advantage here is you're selling everything you make. Then, Roxanne, you're saying the problem here is that you're not selling everything. No, you're right? maybe 70. 75% profit, which means oh, what you made is going back. Well, we don't, we can't say profit because we, what's missing from this is how much it costs to produce. you're only selling 75% of what you make. Right, so you're only selling 75%. So the rest of the milk is going to spoil. Okay. So that doesn't make sense. Okay. Which well, makes a problem for us. Why does that make, why does that make a problem for you? Because we're not getting rid of the milk fast enough. But what's your, what is, what is it that you're trying to do? You're trying, You're trying to make, to make money. money to take care of our family. So which price, which of these situations, which price is going to make them the most money? Ten cents. Why ten cents? I say five cents. I say five. And why do you say five cents? Because it's even. Uh, we produce the hundred bottles. You're producing more milk. Right. right. You produce Every more and you sell more. Bottles, you're going to make your, your hundred, you're going to make, you're selling all hundred. You're selling them all. So everything yeah. you bring, so you, you yeah. send your 100 bottles to New York City and nothing comes back with you. Exactly. Okay? So why do you say 10 cents? So how are you looking at it? Huh? How are you looking at it? I was looking at the amount, but I wasn't looking directly at the amount. I mean, bottles are that's So they make... Okay, yeah. So they make less money. So a dollar difference. Yeah, uh, so, uh, yeah, but the, the main thing here is that they use whole milk, all the production is being set. 
and you know, different in that they leave the milk spoiled and make extra one dollar. So you just you mm -hmm. must reduce the price. I don't know. So uh, so so there's two things. So I want to underline two things that you said. One, because you also just you had addressed it. If if their goal is making money, the best thing for them to do is to sell it for 10 cents because that's where they're going to make the most money, right? Because even though they're not going to sell everything, they're going to make more money because it's more expensive. So they're selling less, but the price of each bottle is up, right? So, and here we get to the difference between supply and demand as a theory and what actually happens. A lot of times it happens just based on this. This is how most people set their prices, right? But some companies are more interested in the environment Right? And so they'll say things like, oh, well, we don't want waste. We want to make as much money as we can, but we're willing to make a little bit less if we, have, if we don't waste anything. Right? So you guys are compassionate. The same compassion you show to trying to help this family, you're showing as a business practice. I really want you guys to go into entrepreneurship and start business. I'm serious. That's my goal. See, so, see, I still, I still, good. So I you're, still don't agree because then we still have milk left over. Where's the rest of this milk? Because we just throw it away? Think about New York City. I don't think like of, the waste. Anymore. I know, yeah, I know. But where? think about think about how much waste is produced. A lot. Right, yeah. because that's not usually a concern. People are trying to maximize their money. You are absolutely right. This means you're going to have 20 bottles of milk that go to waste. Right? Maybe you sell those at a discount. Right? There are other things yeah, that you can right, do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the you can use it to make cheese. You can do other things, mm -hmm. right? But in terms of this idea, you have a certain amount of milk that you need to sell, right? Mm -hmm. They have a certain amount of milk that they need to buy. Right. And how do you meet in the middle, right? How do you say, well, this from your perspective, this is the maximum, right? From their perspective, they'd rather have it at five cents, mm -hmm. right? But that's not enough money for you guys. Right. Okay. Yeah. It was five cents. You guys could buy two bottles of milk. So I just wanted to kind of put put those seeds in the air, right? Just to talk a little bit about this. When you depict, you know, an academic depiction of the law of laws of supply and demand, it's it's clear. It's this is the price, right? It's the maximization. People act only in economic interests of what's the, the most maximizing their profit and the money that they're going to bring in, um, which isn't how everybody interacts, and it's certainly not a given. And so it was an interesting that kind of got raised in the conversation because, you know, certainly people were like, oh, well, you, you charge 10 cents because you bring in the most money. But there were some people, and, and it was interesting, it was the people who played, the, who did the role play um, as the part of the, the milk farmers. They, were, they said, no, well, we'll charge, we'd rather do the 5 cents because we'll sell all of our, you know, we want to sell the price we, it's, we don't, we're not as worried about maximizing our profits, but we, wanna, we don't want to have waste, right? And if we sell it for 80, yes, we'll have more money, but we'll waste all of that milk and then that. So it was an interesting, you know, it, it was a complicating, there are other factors that, that kind of get into supply and demand. And I wasn't thinking of introducing them because to me that's kind of a more complicated part. And, but it was nice that it just came in naturally, I think, because of, of, the, of the details that Kate had put into the, the scenarios. They kind of were really embodying these characters and thinking.